Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Scorpio for June 2015. Go to my website, aspiritualspark.com, or click on the link below this video to see more about my personal life coaching, also to see more about my 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine, which is intended to help you bring your shine into this world, and that is available on a sliding scale with the lowest end of the scale available to everyone, I believe. And while you're there, sign up for my free email newsletter and become part of my community. So we have got so much sweetness in this month. It's crazy. There are some other things to look out for. A couple of um, patches of several days where we really need to be aware of um, certain challenges, but otherwise just really a lot of surprising sweetness this month. So let's get into it. So the theme for this month for Scorpios is all about relationships. The relationship energy for some of you had already started and for some of you, it will continue out past um, June. And there's so many layers of relationship focus. So depending on what Scorpio placements you have, if you're early, middle, or late degree, or what other planets you have, and where those degrees are in Scorpio, you're either having a big cluster of energy in your seventh house, which is one of the houses of partnership, or your eighth house, which is the other house of partnership. The seventh house is like our relationships, our one-on-one -on -one relationships. It's one of the houses of marriage. It's all of your one-on-one -on -one relationships with clients, with people that you work with, pe people that you work for, people that work for you, your romantic partner or partners. That is the seventh house. And the eighth house is like that plus your resources. So you and your money your spouse and their business, you know, your family and the family money, you and your family money. It's, it's your stuff and other people's stuff merged together. And resources are not always as tangible as like money. Money's not very tangible in some ways either, but you know, it's, it's your resources. It's what you're bringing. And so there's tremendous focus in these one, one or more of these houses for Scorpio this month. So we've got the new moon on June 16th is going to happen there, where on that day we've got new chapters opening in relationship. It could be a new chapter within a current relationship, which is more likely because we still have Mercury retrograde, even though it goes direct on June 11th, there's so much of this theme of things coming from the past for May, June, July, August, September, October. So here we are in June. We start out the month with, with Mercury still retrograde. It goes direct on June 11th. It's more haywire in its retrogradeness for the three days or so before and after. So like June 8th through around June 14th, it's kind of like when you're going to make a U-turn and that awkward part of like slowing down and then turning around and then speeding up again. It's like that, it's awkward. So from June 8th through around June 14th, we have Mercury doing its like awkward thing, but at June 11th, it's officially direct, but until around June 14th, you know, I wouldn't sign anything um, still or make any decisions if you can help it. Um, and then the rest of the month until June 27th still has a Mercury shadow period, but if there's something you absolutely have to do, the second half of the month has a lot of brilliant spots for it. So we have that going on, and then we've got this new moon on June 16th. And so it's like bringing this newness, but it's shrouded very much in the past. Shroud sounds like a bad word. It's wrapped, it's wrapped in the energy. It's cloaked in the energy from the past. June 22nd, Venus shadow period starts. So Venus goes retrograde at the end of July and it's pre-retrograde shadow is touching hands with the Mercury shadow and that's June 22nd. So that's what I was getting at all these months and talking about this. There's not any days once we got into the beginning of May, there's not any days until the end of October where there's not some sort of touching from the past with these retrograde uh, placements. But it's still, like I said, if you have to have an open window before the end of November to do something with your business, to do something, make decisions, sign things, the end of June has a lot of sweet spots, a lot of sweet spots, oh my gosh. And there's some sweet spots even before the 14th, but they still don't lend themselves to committing to or making big decisions. So this new moon is going to bring in some new energy of relationship or a new chapter in a current relationship. 
We also have the sun in your seventh or eighth house, which is this spotlight, this focus. Wherever the sun goes, it brings this vibrance, it brings this warmth, but then it also brings awareness to things that maybe weren't there before. So similar to if you, if you up the wattage on a light in a room, then in the lower wattage, you couldn't see certain things for better or worse. So when you put the, the, the bigger light on, which is this, the sun here, right? In these seventh house or eighth house um, uh, partnership energies, then you've got this focus on your relationship where you're seeing things that you hadn't seen before. And some things are like, oh, that's cool. I like that. That's nice. I didn't know that was there. Or you might see, ooh, I don't like that at all. You know, like if it were in a room, you might see cobwebs or cracks in, you know, the paint, paint chipping, things like that. So that the sun is doing this, this focus, this spotlight. And then Mars is coming and it's bringing aggressive, assertive energy towards cooperation or it's bringing arguments and drama because Mars is the god of war. And so if you're not using the energy in the best way, it can lead to bickering and arguing and um, disagreement and people being angry and annoyed with each other. If you find that's happening, just remember that this is one of your best times in, in a couple of years, like in two years. Mars, it takes Mars a little over two years to move around the full circle. So where it is in your chart, it hasn't been there for a couple of years and it's not gonna be there again for another couple of years. So during the weeks that it's there, when you have Mars in your seventh and eighth houses, this is a time for cooperation with others. This is one of the best times to merge together and do something with someone. Maybe you're working with your spouse on a house project. Maybe you're working with your business partner on a new project. You know, it's, it's an awesome time for cooperation. And if you're not having the spirit of cooperation instilled, then you need to free frame that because you're not using it in the best way. So that's all going on. And then if that weren't enough, right, we have um, Mars and the Sun are very close to each other in the sky at this time. So June 5th, um, we have this Mars and Jupiter aspect. It's a 60 degree angle called a sextile. And so Mars being in one of these partnership houses is then having an additional layer of this partnership focus and cooperation brought in with a sweet angle by Jupiter. So June 5th, the, the um, the energy of relationship or resources gets lit up. And for many of you, this is in your career sector. Jupiter is there expanding your career, work, and life purpose. So it's like some projects, some merging, some funding, some support can come in and expand your career to the next level. For those of you who don't have Jupiter there yet, so some of you middle degree to late degree Scorpio placements, this is happening for you in the ninth house. And the ninth house is about teaching and learning and publishing and broadcasting and international interactions and um, religion and philosophy and just kind of the bigger picture. So something can be happening there, again, where someone supports you, someone comes in and connects you with somebody, Some, something that someone else has and that they give to you or offer to you expands and makes wonderful for you something in one or both of these places. And for some of you, your publishing and teaching and learning and all that is linked to your career, work and life purpose. For those of you Scorpios who don't have Jupiter in your 10th house yet, that's some of you middle degree and the rest of you late degree placements, it's coming. And when it does, it's going to kick off a year of the best expansion possibilities for your career, work and life purpose. You early degree Scorpios have been experiencing this. Now, if so hopefully you're experiencing this. And of course, the big question is, what if I'm an early degree Scorpio placement? So your birthday or uh, your birthday is right there at the beginning of the sign. And, you know, so the end of October. And what, what if you're not having um, these wonderful things happen in your career and your work and your life purpose or expansion on things with your father or anything like that? Then what does that mean? Does it mean astrology is crap and doesn't work? No, of course not. Every culture that has had recorded um, written history have all used astrology for day-to-day -day and big things just because it's a tool that helps you do that on any level. So of course it's not that astrology doesn't work. It is that the transits bow down to what is inside of you. Okay, so if you imagine 
the way I see this is like spirit infuses, I get chills when I talk about this. Okay, so spirit comes through your crown chakra and is infusing your field with these energetic potentials of the sky, right? And then when it comes there, it meets your brain, okay? And your brain and your body wiring, your skeletal structure and, and all of that, your, your, your imprint, we'll say, and that's a hologram, so it's everywhere from the smallest cell in you to your skeletal structure, to your brain wiring. So it meets that. And then it gets modified based on what's there. And then it shoots out, say out the third eye like a projector. And it projects out the modified version of the energetic potentials based on your programs. That is a big deal. That is a huge deal. So let's say Jupiter is like, yay, it's time to be bringing your awesomeness to the world in super huge ways. And your program says, you're not good enough. You can't possibly do this. You have to do things you don't like to make money. You can't be in your highest creative expression and, and take care of your family. You know, nobody cares about what you have to say. Let's say that's your program. Then Jupiter comes in here and says, it's time to step out into the world. And your program says, it's time to shrink in the corner and be terrified and think I'm not good enough. And guess what's gonna win? And this isn't always black and white, like it either does manifest or it doesn't manifest. Most of the time it's gray. So it manifests to the degree to which your program will let it. Wow, that is huge. That is terrifying also. It's terrifying because we've been living our lives with the transits bowing down to our program. But the good news of that, and this is the best news that anyone can ever hear, is that you can shift your wiring. You can shift your imprint. And when you do, you shift how the planetary energies, the potentials move through you. So again, back to this projector. I like butterflies, so let's imagine that you have this little, I'm picturing a little metal butterfly thing, like with little holes cut out of the metal um, that shape the butterfly. And you have it here and then a light source, which is spirit coming through you, mixing with your, bringing the potentials, mixing with your program and then pushing out through your third eye. And it comes out in the form of a butterfly, right? Because the light source is from back here and it, it makes butterfly be what you see. Okay. So butterfly is, is the symbol for your life. Your life is being projected out before you from inside of you. And if you don't like butterflies, then you better get a different, thing in front of where the light source is, <laughs> okay? That is what we're talking about. So whether or not you have had Jupiter manifesting for you in big ways with your work and your life purpose, or whether you haven't, I'm sure that there's still ways it can be even better. And that is what inner work is all about. That is why we focus on inner work. That is why I cannot possibly talk about astrology without talking about the inner imprint and what's going on inside of you and, and inner work, because I would be doing you a complete disservice by just saying, these are the potentials now, good luck with that, have a nice life, right? Without telling you, how are you gonna maximize this juiciness? It is so crazy juicy this month, okay? And that's all within your hands, you can do that. There's always hope and you can take an active role in your destiny. Okay, so these transits are coming through with all of these potentials, okay? So from the beginning of the month, we've got a little bit of weirdness with the full moon. I know I'm not going in order this month. Sometimes I try to, but sometimes I get too excited and I can't, so I'm sorry about that. And I, I jump all over the place, but you can always replay the video and take notes and write things down and place them in a chronological order if you really want to um, have it organized that way. So June 2nd, we have a full moon in Sagittarius and full moons bring things to fullness, completion, fruition, that closes chapters, and this is the energy of Sagittarius. Now, for some of you, this is going to happen in your second house, which is, which is your material world. For some of you, it might be something involving a stream of income. Maybe a stream of income is coming to an end, or maybe um, something is going on with something that you own, or something is happening with your finances in general. There's some, there's some emotional thing that's happening here. For the rest of you, and some of you will experience this in both houses, if it's on the line there, this full moon could be in your first house, which is like you, it could be a personal drama of like, who am I? What am I doing? What am I supposed to be doing? You know, and it could just be the question of what about me? Maybe you've been focusing on everybody else and 
and in your internal way, you've just been kind of taking things from your external world and processing them as Scorpios do. And this time it's like, what about me? What about my needs? What about my desires? What about what I like? What about, you know, what about me? So we have this full moon flavored by a square to Neptune. Whenever there's a challenging angle like a square, which is a 90 degree angle, the, the spirit of the energies at play always tend to go more towards the negative potentials because it's just a natural way of, of you know, moving into a challenge. So Neptune's challenging energies are, it can be deceptive, it can be addictive, it can be escapist, it can be chaotic, there can be confusion. So all of those words are words that are highlighted for these days, even the end of May. I get my full moon freak out two to three days before the full moon. And by the time the full moon happens, I'm recording this on a full moon now, it's like, ah, huh, all right, I did that already. You know, the full moon is like, I'm not emotionally anything, it's all cool. So you might wanna pay attention several days before the full moon. You might get your freak out then, or your fullness, or your situation. But there's gonna be confusion. You're gonna be confused, you might be scared, you might be, you know, um, stressed, you might not know all the details, something that someone wasn't telling you might come out at this time, or you being suspicious that someone's being deceptive could be highlighted. I say this because of the challenging angle to Neptune. You just don't have all the information. Mercury's still retrograde, so you're not having all the information anyway. But this full moon with this Neptune aspect is, is kicking that up several notches. So besides the very end of the you know couple of days of May in the first several days of June, and then again June 8th through around June 14th, those are your hot spots for looking out kind of that are a little sketchy. But then we have all of this sweetness, okay, right? So we've got the June 5th, um, we have the Mars and Jupiter um, sextile, which can bring support that boosts you on your way and whatever you're doing. You've got the sun coming on June 8th to follow up and say, hey, I'm here too, I'm gonna help you out too. And that's a sweet aspect to Jupiter again. Then on June 5th to June 6th, you have Venus, which rules love, beauty, and money, making an awesome aspect to Saturn. And Saturn is like our grumpy, you know, crotchety old codger of the cosmos. And he's very miserly. He has, he's, has a lot of money, he has a lot of wisdom, but he holds it, he emotionally withholds. He wants discipline and hard work and will create obstacles and make things difficult and things you have to learn things the hard way and you have to work all the time for anything. That's what Saturn is like. Well, Venus comes and makes a sweet aspect. It's like she's flirting with him and he likes it and he smiles and rains his benevolence down on people. So that is what the times around June 5th and June 6th with, with again, this big story of things from the past. So people from the past, things that you've done in the past, projects from the past, coming some kind of anchor in the past with some new things that are coming in. June 9th, we have the Mars and the Sun are just getting really close together. They get, they sit right on top of each other on June 14th. This is once every couple of years, the Sun and Mars, Sun which rules what you want and Mars which rules your energy, how you go about doing things. Well, that's also your rising sign, but Mars is like your, how you use your energy. And so you have this like a power day. So that's happening on June 14th, but the days up until June 14th, you notice, right? We said Mars is gonna sextile Jupiter, and then right after that, the sun comes and does that, because the sun is following along. And then on the 9th, Mars and the sun both make this sweet aspect, another 60 degree angle, to Uranus, and Uranus is the planet of surprises. Things that you cannot even, I mean, even if you're intuitive, you're still surprised. I have seen, this happens so many times where I see something coming for myself where I'm like, oh, okay, I see that coming. And Uranus is involved. And whenever it comes, it still feels like a surprise. It's like, whoa, that's a surprise. It's like, but you knew that was gonna happen. How is it a surprise? Because Uranus was involved and it has just this aspect of like a lightning bolt where it's like just a second ago, there wasn't a lightning bolt there. And now there's a whoosh, lightning bolt. You know, that's Uranus, it comes in out of the blue. But this is in a sweet angle. So we've had in the previous months, some really super obnoxious um, angles or, or transits with Uranus that have been very unsettling and terrible. But Uranus in this way, so basically it's brought bad surprises, but in this aspect, the likelihood that your surprises are going to be good are dramatically increased. But again, the transits are going to bow down to your program, right? So we're like, we've got all this potential, but you gotta mind your mental space, your being, because 
we don't know what's gonna happen. It's a surprise. But we look at things in astrology from a statistical standpoint, from a probability standpoint. So the odds that there's gonna be these happy surprises are bumped up to like 90% with an aspect like this. And so you've got Mars, which rules all this vibrant movement, and you have the Sun, which represents what you want in your creativity, in these sweet angles to Uranus, and it's, it's all happening in fire and air, which is like very vibrant, <clears throat> very vivacious. Okay, so then on the 14th, we have, as we said, the Saturn and Mars conjunction. It's a power day. We also have Saturn going retrograde that day, okay? And this is a big deal for everyone, but this is especially a big deal for Scorpios because Saturn's going to go back into those last degrees of Scorpio. And if you have a late Scorpio birthday, so like around the 20th, of November or the days right after that or just before that you're going to be most affected by it or if your rising sign or your other um, Scorpio placements are at late degrees of Scorpio you'll be most affected by this transit but everybody has some carryover of relationship karma associated with this time so it's like unfinished business you know it's things coming back from the past again our theme of the personal planets being retrograde here Saturn comes in and does this at the same time there are layers on, on top of layers of clearing up relationship karma. Scorpio rules relationships on, on very deep levels. And when Saturn, the bringer of karma, comes here, then we, we see this karmic thing do its thing again, right? So something that I highly recommend for burning karma. If you have become aware that there's some force in your life, call it karma, call it something else, where you're like, I'm supposed to be working something out. I'm supposed to be getting something and I'm not, and it's causing me grief, right? Okay. Whatever you want to call that, I call it karma. Then you, what you can do about this, there's a lot of different inner techniques you can do, but something really easy that you don't need to pay anyone to do, that you don't need to buy anything to do is take, take inventory of the things you have really strong opinions about, especially in relationships. Okay. Because, this is regarding Scorpio. You can do this with every area of your life. Let's say you have this really big charge around people being polyamorous, you know, being in more than one romantic relationship at a time. And it just chafes your bottom. And you're just like, that's ridiculous. And blah, 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 whatever. And you have a charge to that. Whatever you have a charge to, you attract this energy like crazy. So it makes you more likely to attract a cheating spouse who has a polyamorous relationship with somebody else. You see what I'm saying? When you, the things you, you feel most strongly about, like something like that's bad. And I'm not saying what is bad or good or whatever, again, because I've been doing this work for a long time. So it's like, I'm clearing up my judgments on any of this, where this is a vast earth plane of experience where people come for different reasons and they come to have different experiences. And it's wide open for that, okay? But the most important thing about your karma is if you have a charge to it, you're going to attract those circumstances because what spirit wants is to level out strong opinions. That's it, period. That's right. I mean, we could talk about nothing else. And if you did that, your life would be so much easier. So if you have a strong opinion, if you find yourself saying, well, it shouldn't be that way, and this shouldn't be that way, and this should be that way, and shouldn't, 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 shouldn't. Those are the things that you're going to attract to you like magnets, like any person that's, you know, you know, I have a certain charge of something that I'm working on right now and everywhere I go, that is happening. And I'm like, are you kidding me? There, there has to be this not going on somewhere and wherever I am, that is. And it reminds me like, of course it's going on because you don't think it should be that way. Right? So that's what happens. You attract it to you. So do yourself a favor and go down your list of things that you think should be in relationships and then work on softening those things because that's what life, that's what the transits, that's what your wiring is bringing you. It's bringing you opportunities to soften your views. Now that doesn't mean that you then have no backbone and, and don't have any principles or don't have, you know, any way that you run your life or values. That just means that you live and let other people live and you don't get hurt by how pissed off you are by what other people are doing. And that makes it less likely that what they're doing is going to interfere with your life. Okay, so Saturn in retrograde is very much about that. 
And then we have the new moon in Gemini on the 16th. Um, on the 20s, or of course the 21st, we have the summer solstice. We have the sun moving into Cancer. And this is another power day, the day of most light. So on the day of most light, you can look into the places of most dark and shed light. It's a wonderful day for inner work. Then on the 22nd, we have this amazing trine with Jupiter and Uranus. So we've had all these personal planets, the sun and Mars, and um, you know, making these beautiful aspects to Jupiter and making these beautiful aspects to Uranus. And then Jupiter and Uranus come and make this trine to one another. And this is even a bigger deal because two outer planets coming together in an aspect lasts longer. The influence lasts longer. And this has kind of been going on, on and off ever since Jupiter went into Leo last summer. But it's exact again now. And so your creativity, your work, your how you're showing up in the world, your daily routine, any of these things can, this is just a powerful time for using your creative faculties. And then we end off the 28th and 29th with Venus making this awesome angle to Uranus. So happy surprises in love, happy surprises in money, things coming from the past. Um, and we have our month. So just remember that your soul is so much brighter so much bigger than your circumstances and you're just a sketchy outline of of who you can become so if you need me help with that definitely get my shine program my 28 day virtual coaching program go to my website aspiritualspark.com it is put together to help you be your best live your best life and you can also look into having a personal session with me and sign up for my free email newsletter and have a wonderful june i'll see you next month bye